The situation on the ground here in Del Rio, we've talked to the local sheriff. He says he's never seen it this bad. Facing extreme heat, migrants cross the Rio Grande. They're destroying our country. In Del Rio, Texas, you've been watching. Tens of thousands of illegal immigrants. Yeah, you met a Democratic sheriff who's supporting Republican Governor Greg Abbott's border wall. There have been police pursuits with DPS and with the local sheriff's department here. And that's how the rest of the country sees us, as, you know, being in a war zone. I got a call from Project Red Texas in October. They wanted me to convert over to the Republican side. They said, you're more conservative than most Republicans. I'm Catholic, I'm pro-life and pro-gun. They want me to be more aggressive to the immigration issue. I'm not gonna dance to somebody else's drum. They found somebody from out of town that had ties to Del Rio. That individual hasn't lived here in over 30 years. And all of a sudden, he shows up in the ninth inning. Come on, give me a break. Buenos días, ¿cómo amaneció? ¿Si le puedo entregar sus cartelones aquí para salir a votar? How you doing, sir? I'm Roger Hernandez, running for sheriff. Yes, sir. I've been a Texas peace officer for 33 years. Okay. Two in Bear County Sheriff's Office and 31 with SAPD in San Antonio. Okay. So uh, I'm ready to bring order to the board out right here. told some of the Yuko guys the other day that I was born to serve. I wasn't born to be served. I don't think we were, we were born to serve. We were raised well, to serve. That's because that's what Dad did. And I think and Mom. And Mom. And that's what I think all of us do. We had a household with 10 kids, uh, so we didn't have a lot of luxuries. always emphasized to us, we're in this country, we're Americans first. He also stressed that we should never forget our roots. My dad's family is from Mexico. My mother's mother was from Mexico, but her father was from Northern Italy. Growing up here in the Rio, the border literally is two minutes away. We saw lots of people come. I remember taking food out to them. My dad, and I remember him saying, you know, these are just people trying to come across the border to look for a better life. Dad was a political leader here in our community and was part of a group of Democrats back in the 60s and 70s. My brother Adrian, he retired from the U.S. Border Patrol. My sister Terry, she's a financial officer there in the jail. My brother Leo, his family owns a maquiladora, both in Mexico and here in the U.S. And my brother David, he's the county attorney. My father, he wanted to be the first Hispanic sheriff of Alberta County. At his passing, I took that as a goal, and I've been holding the position for 15 years now. Del Rio has probably a little under 40,000 people. Any big city is about two and a half to three hour drive for us. It's a beautiful community, still majority Hispanic. It's the sector headquarters for U.S. Border Patrol. We have a U.S. federal courthouse here. We have an Air Force base. Those jobs are some of the best paying jobs in this community. Whether you're blue or red, everybody is supportive of law enforcement here. This is the first election cycle where at the local level, uh, immigration seems to be gaining more and more importance in the minds of the voter. I attribute a lot of that here to Operation Lone Star. Governor 
Greg Abbott playing host to former President Donald Trump and briefing him on what Texas is doing to secure the border. We've launched what's called Operation Lone Star, a surge of resources to the border. The Biden administration's open border policies have created an open season. If you dare step into the state of Texas, Texas will use every tool and strategy we can to arrest anybody who's violating the law. And it begins immediately today, right here in Valverde County. Is, is the federal government helping your county with offsetting the costs, or are you guys just on your own? We're basically on our own. 75% of my uh, workforce for that shift uh, was occupied assisting Border Patrol. Thousands of migrants crowding in a temporary camp under the Del Rio International Bridge, hoping for possible entry. Most of them from Haiti. U.S. Border Patrol officers being criticized. How they're handling the migrants captured on video on horseback, blocking their path at the Rio Grande, even appearing to whip some of the migrants. We had 18,000 plus people underneath that bridge over a 16 day period. It was almost half the size of the population of Del Rio. We were in no way able to handle the numbers that were coming across. That Sunday where it hit its peak, I got a phone call. It was from a local official. They were getting pressure from the governor's office to arrest all of those people for criminal trespass. So the call that was made to me was, will you prosecute them? So I said, okay, I, said, I want you to consider what you're asking me to do. You all have set up a compound. They had brought in trucks to have water. When have you given them notice that they're no longer welcome? I would have been violating people's constitutional rights by the thousands, and, and I wasn't gonna do it. I live the fact that they shut down this border. In order for us to stay in business, instead of going from Acuna del Rio, it's going Acuna, Piedras Negras, Eagle Pass to Del Rio. I'd hate to see if that were to happen for more than a week or two. But what do you do after that? The ugly answer is you shut your door down. I know David sits on the side of, you know, we need to reform immigration policy. I totally agree. But how many of those people can the U.S. absorb? I'm a party jumper. I'm a super ultra conservative Democrat, and even my family pretty much say, Leo, you're, you're probably one of the few Republicans we have that we a have. That is two inches, uh -huh. and it's wider. People that are in business, they're probably going to be leaning towards someone like a Trump. No panko, no panko, no leche, nothing. Just that rest. Sufrimos porque tuvimos a los haitianos bajo de un puente. Yo creo que durante el cuatrienio de Trump, pues él tomó las acciones que, que debía de hacer. Eh, en este momento, me identifico con el Partido Republicano. En 2021, we were at the point of the spear when we experienced our crisis here, or, you know, people call it an invasion. That's a constant memory. Del Rio, Valverde County, you know, for the last three months, it's been very slow. Being rural, our tax base is very low. Our deputies are not making the kind of money that they should be making. Because I have grant funds, I can have additional deputies in support of our federal and state partners. efforts that Governor Abbott put in place here, it really helped me keep my community safe. There was about six months left in the Trump administration that started tearing this fence down and putting up that other barrier. They left it unfinished. And then when Biden came in, all work was stopped. And as you can see here, they just secured it. There's talk about them coming back and finishing it off, but probably no telling when. I mean, to me, this is just an eyesore. And it's just reflective of a broken system. Through Operation Lone Star, we just have a boat. It's for recovery. People coming to this country that lose their life trying to get here. 
we're a nation of laws and the rule of law. You know, at the same time, we have a humanitarian side. How can we not care about a life? Ahead and get started. We'll come to order, and we are here this morning for the Operation Lone Star docket. And is the state ready to proceed? We are ready, Your Honor. And you have to give up for the state. Operation Lone Star. It created a responsibility on my part and a lot of prosecutors along the border in prosecuting cases involving criminal trespass, involving human smuggling. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. I, I apologize for not being here at docket call. Apparently, I, I was unable to read a calendar this morning. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> the focus of the initial operation was they were after the bad guys. They started making arrests where not all of the elements of criminal trespass were met. I dismissed those cases. And I started hearing from some of my Republican friends, and they were saying, oh, you know, so-and-so at the governor's office knows about you, and they don't feel like you're being completely on board with Operation Lone Star. But if you give me one moment, I can try to find out. This is a community that has so many needs. There's so many things that the state of Texas could do with $4 billion. Let's not mask a program that should be addressed fully by the federal government. My office isn't there to enforce immigration laws. All right. Well, thank you everyone for uh, all your assistance and your hard work. <laughs> okay, lights on. Here we go. Call this meeting to order. Determine there's a quorum present. Item 52, discussion possible action regarding the memorandum of understanding between Texas Commission on Law Enforcement and Valverde County Sheriff's Office. Motion carries, 5-0, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Uh, item 34, discussion possible action. When I first began working as a journalist here in Del Rio, back in the early 80s, nearly everyone was a Democrat. Over the years, more and more people are voting Republican. The Republican Party here has done what I think is a pretty amazing job of getting people to run for positions that Democrats have traditionally held, especially as the Democratic Party began to get more progressive and left-leaning. for three and a half years, I don't think that we've had a single day of normalcy. I drew an opponent who had the support of Project Red Texas. It was discovered shortly after the election that my Republican opponent voted in the Democratic primary. So my opponent disqualified himself. So what has the county wasted money on so far? <laughs> Oh, I guess that's a matter of uh, <laughs> that's a matter of opinion. Who you're asking? I know you're asking me. I have some uh, siblings who vote Republican. I guarantee you that all of my siblings are behind Joe Frank and his candidacy. Get over here, Chapel. Hey, shh, shh. get over here. I know in the case of Joe Frank, he's been offered some PAC money from the other party that he's refused because they want to change the way he does things. And I'm proud of him for saying no. It concerns me that there could be a big PAC that can come in here and just start flooding the marketplace. And all they're trying to do is take advantage of the fact that Democrats and the Republicans are at each other's throats. It could change a lot of the dynamics of not only Del Rio's local politics, but all along the border. The Democratic Party from the 70s and 80s is not the same Democratic Party as it is today. But switching parties just because would be a dishonor to my dad and his memory. 
I can't afford to listen to what's going on way in the left or way in the right. The immigration issue is not a local issue. It's a federal issue that needs to be addressed federally. When people start voting for the D or the R behind their name and not voting for the person, we put ourselves in a dangerous place. Okay, I got a call from the chief of police over there. Might be requesting some help this afternoon. They made several arrests for assaults and several weapon violations. They're all tied to the people that are not from there. Yeah. He's afraid that it's gonna spill over into Go Eagle Pass. But hell, that one thing this morning said 300 plus vehicles. That was more than what was in the caravan to begin with. Well, see, so these are, the caravan was just those, uh, the bus and 20, 30 vehicles, but all these are other individuals that uh, that took that probably took part in that January 6th deal. This weekend, communities around Eagle Pass are expecting lots of visitors as the Take Back Our Border rally makes its way there. The group says they're protesting the record number of migrant crossings. Heaven does have walls and hell does have open borders. And if we open up borders up and have open borders, we're going to turn America into a living hell. Are you legal? <laughs> You're screaming about your rights? Are they all legal? Donald Trump will save this country. How you doing, sir? Okay. Good, good, good. I'm running for sheriff. Rogelio Rogel Hernandez. You think you're going to beat all what he says? No, sir. I'm going to wait. I'm going to beat him. You got to be positive. Yeah. You got to, hey, you got to love life. Order to the border, it doesn't mean just immigration. It means border town. And then yes, immigration is part of it. Well, recently it's been a big part of it. You need more wall, you need this and that. It's, it's about our pay grade. You know, it's not up to us, it's up to whatever the person in charge decides. President Trump, that's when I started looking into voting a lot more. I never thought about running. I was just thinking like, I know I can do a better job. I can remember I approached Roger Redding, well, they approached me and they told me what it's all about. And I decided to throw my name in a hat and they helped me financially in paying for my filing fee. Here, okay. buddy, That's my sign, you got it? Hold on, there you go. Once I become sheriff, it's transparency and collaboration and customer service. I'll give them better training, better equipment, better vehicles, better everything. There's grants out there that you can get. I'm in it to win it. If God wants me to be here, I'm going to be here. And if the citizens of Everly wants me to be here, I'll succeed, I'll win. I'm the fourth generation rancher on the Rio Grande. I'm voting for Rogelio for Valverde County Sheriff. Great. It's locked. I'm a longtime friend of Joe Frank Martinez. I just wish he would have pressed the border issue more. Hola, ¿cómo está? David Martinez. El día de elección, todo depende en donde vive. Ustedes están en, en el 10 o 11, es, es, es en el Joe, Joe Ramos. Ramos. Okay. Entonces, Pero pueden votar temprano y ya no tienen que preocuparte no. ese día. Ah, okay. Suerte a ustedes. No, a mí me, me encanta él. Es mi hermano. Ah, es su hermano. Es mi hermano, sí. sí. Yo, yo también estoy corriendo, soy el fiscal del condado, pero yo no tengo nadie en contra. <risa> es que hoy estamos estoy trabajando por él. Es... Sí, exacto. Gracias. Last four years, we faced a lot of adversity in our community. You know, we faced a COVID crisis. We faced the, the Haitians. So I think that the immigration issue is going to be a big deal, but our numbers here are low. The immigration issue is a responsibility of the federal government. Uh, September 1st, I completed 
47 years of, of, of public service to uh, our community. You know, Governor Abbott has taken drastic, drastic measures, but at the end of the day, I look at it like this. There was Florida troopers here, there was DPS troopers here, and to me, that helped me keep my citizens safe. There's a lot of people that, you know, that think it's a war zone. Even sheriffs think it's a war zone down here, and it's not. There's a lot of law enforcement here. On every street, I guarantee it's a law enforcement officer somewhere. I take the job very seriously because at the end of the day, I took an oath to serve and to protect. We can't take this lightly. We got to get the citizens to come out and vote. I ask for your vote and support. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters. This immigration crisis, I've asked that it not be phrased an immigration crisis. This is a human crisis. You know, we can't be inhuman. We can't put our compassion aside. I was brought up in a home where doing the right thing was emphasized. I think my mom and dad would be very disappointed in me if I did anything different. We don't see the occasional immigrant anymore. We see a swarm. The majority of the immigrants that we did see used to be from Mexico. Now the majority of the immigrants that we see are everybody but from Mexico. If we are pawns in this game that the federal government's playing, what's the ultimate goal? Far left and the far right, you know, in my opinion, all they're going to do is just uh, spread hate and discontent, and that's not what we need. Do we really have a system that's broken, or do we have a political machine that's broken? We have to do better than what's going on right now in this country. We got a lot of work to do.